Have you ever wondered how a traffic light works or what it looks like on the inside? Yeah, me too. So today I've got this antique traffic light. Let's open it up. We'll take a look at it. I'll show you why the lenses in this thing are so special. I'll show you what's special about the case. And I've got a wire here. It's pretty sketchy. Maybe we can plug it in and see if it does something without catching on fire. I haven't tried it yet. It's going to be exciting. Will I burn the garage down? I don't know. Let's see if we can figure out what happens right now. So the very first traffic lights, you know, everyone's used to seeing red, yellow, and green. The very first traffic lights were just red and then green. There was no yellow light in the middle. And that was because there was a lot less traffic. It was a lot slower speed. And people said, well, you only need a light to stop or go. You're on the road, the light's green, you go. If it's red, you stop. So you'd be traveling up to the light, to the intersection, and the light would be green. And then all of a sudden, bam, it would be red and it would stop. And some of the early lights even had the little flags that would stick out that said, like, go and stop. And they would change on the side along with the light. Well, you know, that was all right in the very beginning when there wasn't a lot of traffic. But as people uh, got used to lights and they became more prevalent, it was probably decided, like, hey, it would be nice to have a warning signal in between red and green. So that's when the yellow light probably in the early 1930s got added to be pretty much standard was the yellow warning be like hey i'm green i'm gonna turn okay stop so that's that's why we've got the standard red yellow and green now but the early the first traffic lights from the 1920s were just red and green what i have here is a model d as in david 19 late 1930s first generation kraus heinz traffic light with the art deco styling this, these are made in Syracuse, New York, and this is the original Model D. They have a later model called the Model DT, but this is the original Model D, the first generation, and I'll show you why I know that. Now, what makes these Krauss Heinz lights so special is they have these lenses. They are special glass. They're called smiley lenses, and if you can see here, they've got a smile in the glass. I believe they're made in Corning, like uh, Corning New York Corning glass. And if I flip one open for a little surprise, you can see the smiley edge on the inside here. Now I've already revealed the magic of what makes a traffic light work. It's the reflector. All traffic lights, as far as I know, uh, now nowadays they're LED lights, but originally all the original traffic lights were a reflector, a chromed reflector, and a 120 volt lamp. I'm not sure the original wattage this light would have had. This one has, uh, I bought it from a garage sale of all places for $40, if you can believe that. I saw it on the side of the road, but it's got a mixed match of lamps in it. Somebody had it in their, in their garage or in their house lit up. It's got a 60 watt light here. It's got a 25 volt, or I'm sorry, 25 watt real old GE electric here. This upper lamp might be one of the original heavy-duty lamps for the for the traffic light. And I'm going to bring it up to here and show you closer. Maybe the camera will focus on the filament. It's got like a five-sided filament. And this might have been one of the original style lamps, rough service lamps to go in here. I'm not sure. But all traffic lights, as far as I know, were 120 volts and used regular incandescent lamps where the, the brightness be started because of the reflector. The reflectors, I believe, are made in Corning as well, and they hinge open to reveal the back side, which is the back of your reflector, and then the wiring here. This was a top mount light. It's got what Krauss Heinz collectors call the barrel mount. This looks like a barrel laid on its side, and uh, this gray wire obviously wouldn't have been here, but this shackle would have hung on a cable across the road. Now this barrel collection with this like clevis would allow it to blow in the wind on a cable. This would be mounted to a cable and it would be suspended over your center of your road. These also, like I said, could be mounted on a post. There's a pipe fitting on the top and the bottom of the housing where they could have mounted a pipe, like a two inch pipe to the light post and had it mounted on the side. But on the interior here, you can see we've got some electrical connect connections. Somebody's put a cord in here and wired all the lamps up to fire all at the same time. And the wiring is original. There's cloth covered wiring in here. 
And one of the reasons I know this is an original early Kraus Heinz light is the gasket for the door is made out of uh, cotton, like woven cotton. The later ones had a cork gasket, but the original, uh, I believe 1936 to probably 1930, or 1936 to like the 1940s, maybe early 1950s, they used the cotton gasket. There might be a date here, I can't see it. I'm not sure. But I believe this is the Model D early uh, light. And this is a single-sided light. There's no lights on the back. You could get these in uh, front, three-way, four-way. So if you had four-way intersections, three-way three -way intersections, this would have stopped an individual road, just a front-facing one. So this is a smaller light. Collectors like the four-sided ones. Generally, the more lights you can have on your traffic light, the more valuable they are. But this is uh, quite a valuable light. I saw it at a garage sale, like I said. I drove by and I saw it. It was hanging there. It was $40. Now this light in this original condition, even if it doesn't work with the original lenses, the lenses are about $75 a piece. This is probably a $400 light that I got for $40 at a garage sale. So all three of these doors open here, they're all pretty much the same. We can see the, the cast green on the original color, the bed in the original bright green color. The outside of this is faded. The housing is all aluminum. And it's got an Art Deco style, like picture 1930s architecture on the top and as well on the bottom. And uh, we've got the original wiring, like I said here, cloth covered wiring, original lamp holders, original smiley face lenses. And when the doors close, they uh, have these tabs here which are you lever down and you can close the doors up and they will stay shut in the weather this is this one's a little stiff I had to use pliers to open it um, also you can see there's a ring around here this lamp originally had a shield on the lights there's some set screws along the side which are missing and or broken off so this would have had a hood on it uh, the lower section is open to let rain out but this could either had a full hood all the way around a barrel mount, or it could have had like a peaked one, like you see in more modern style lights. But this is a pretty much original condition, never been painted, never really been uh, messed with, except for putting a, a cord on it to hook up in somebody's house. It's pretty much, as you see it, original condition Krauss Heinz traffic light. So I have a cord hooked up here the the wiring is very very sketchy all the all the lamps are hooked together so they should all light up at the same time and the neutral wire is pretty bare i'm going to try to plug this in right now i'll turn the lights off and we'll plug it in and see if it in fact does light and or catches on fire all right you guys watch the traffic light let's see what happens oh look at that so it works. So you can see the smiley lens in the bottom. That directs the light down into the side a little bit. So if you're on the street, like you can see the light easier than straight on for the traffic light. Obviously the lower one is out. I don't want to leave it plugged in too long because that wiring is super sketchy. But you can see it does work and you can see the colors of the light there. So there we go. That was pretty cool. We determined that it worked. The lower lamp here is probably just uh, blown. Actually, if I... Yeah, the lower lamp is... Uh... The lower lamp, the filament is missing there, so that's why the lower, the green light didn't work. But you get the idea. Now they sell kits for these, like you saw all the lights came out at the same time. Um, that's because they're all wired together right now. They do sell sequencer kits if you're into, if you want to have a traffic light at your house and you want to cycle through the lights, they sell sequencers. Um, you get a little box that basically runs them through the signals as it would on a... Uh, you know, a city street. Out in the real world, there is a control box that uses either timing and or a, a magnetic uh, sensing loop in the road. So if you see those like little fine lines cut at the intersections, there's actually a grid of wire that you, your car drives over and the wire senses the car is there. And then it tells the control box, hey, there's a car that wants to go say northbound 
and there's nobody going east and west, so let's let's put the red light on for east and west, and let's turn on the light for north and south, and it lets you cycle through for an indiscriminate amount of time till either somebody comes and trips the loop for the other way, or say they've got it set for a minute and a half, and then it goes back to red and cycles around the other way. They can work in combinations of timers and sensors. So that's pretty much a traffic light in a nutshell, or an aluminum shell in this case. Uh, your lenses, your reflectors, your 120 volt lamps to do the action. Like I said in the beginning of the video, modern style traffic lights are either now coming with flat plastic LED lenses or they're retrofitting, uh, they'll put an LED lamp into the reflective housing. But most of the brand new build, uh, you know, manufactured today lights you'll see have like a flat LED lens and they're way more intense but they're not as directional. Like this, you can see the light from the side. That's why you had the side shields because the light would shine from all directions. The new LED lights don't really require as much of a, a hood on it because the light is straight out with the way the LED optics are. It's not as bulbous as a glass projecting lens would be. So uh, that was the whole reason that they usually put hoods on these lights was to direct the light straight to the car so you wouldn't get it going all over the place uh, with the with the optics of the glass lens here. But that's pretty much it. Traffic light, how it works. I hope you enjoyed it. It's, it's the first time I've had one open and it's uh, pretty cool, pretty simple, but very, very reliable technology that's been around for a hundred years now and pretty much the same idea as when they came out in the 1920s. So that's about it. As you can see, I'm in the bed of a pickup truck. My uh, main focus is car videos. I do uh, revivals, restorations, fabrication work. Working right now on the 77 Ford truck. I got a C10 build coming up. But today, we just did a neat old stuff video on a neat old Cross Hines Model D traffic light. And if you want to see more, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It's red. It's just like the, the upper light on the traffic light. You hit it and, it's, and it gets you subscribed. You can see when all the videos come out, I put out car videos Wednesdays and Sundays and I try to do like a neat old stuff video like this on Saturdays. So there's uh, three videos a week usually to look forward to and I appreciate the support. Leave a comment and we'll see you on the next video.